Hey, this is Dexter. In this video, we'll be learning about logarithms in additional mathematics. In the first part of the question, solve the equation of log x squared to the base of 4 minus away 3 times log 4 to the base of x equal to 1. Next, solve a separate logarithmic equation of 2 times of log 1 minus x to the base of 2 minus away log x to the base of 2 minus away log 2x to the base of 2 subtract away 3 to be equal to 0. Lastly, using the results from the previous part, solve a similar logarithmic equation of 2 times log negative y to the base of 2 minus away log y plus 1 to the base of 2 subtract away log 2y plus 2 to the base of 2 minus away 3 to be equal to 0. This question is from Anderson Secondary School 2021 prelim. Pause to give it a try and when you're ready, keep watching. When solving logarithmic equations, we should always change the base of all logarithmic terms to be the same before we apply other laws of logarithms. In the first equation, the first logarithmic term has a base of 4 and the second has a base of x. Because they are of different bases, we will now apply the change of base formula where log b to the base of a is equal to log b to the base of c divided by log a to the base of c. We can also derive a special case of this formula if we decide to change to the base of b instead of c. Since log b to the base of b is equal to 1, we will now have the quick formula of log b to the base of a to be equal to 1 divided by log a to the base of b. That is by having 1 divided by the logarithmic term and swapping the positions of both a and b. We will now apply the quick formula to the second logarithmic term by taking 3 divided by the logarithmic term and swapping the positions of x and 4. With our logarithmic terms to be the same base of 4, we can now apply other laws of logarithms and in this case, the power law of logarithms where log x to the power of r to the base of a is equal to r times of log x to the base of a. And we can now bring down the exponent 2 to be a product with the logarithm giving us 2 times of log x to the base of 4. Next, we multiply by log x to the base of 4 throughout the equation to give us this quadratic equation involving log x to the base of 4. For those who are not able to tell that it is a quadratic equation, we can do an additional step of substituting log x to the base of 4 to be equal to k to give us 2k squared minus away 3 to be equal to k. Then, we factorize this quadratic equation. Solving for this quadratic equation will give the first solution set of log x to the base of 4 to be equal to 3 over 2 or log x to the base of 4 to be equal to negative 1. To solve for unknown x, we have to change the logarithmic form to exponential form where we change x equal to log y to the base of a into y equal to a to the power of x. We should always begin the conversion with the base as both the logarithmic form and exponential form has the same base. From the formula, we can tell that both the logarithmic form and exponential form has a base of a. And in our two solutions, both logarithmic terms have a base of 4. We should now write the 4 as the base of the exponential form. Next, the exponent x in exponential form will come from the opposite side of the logarithmic equation. And in our case, we will have the exponents to be 1.5 and negative 1 from the opposite sides of the two logarithmic equations. We will now complete both the equations by filling in the missing term x. And solving it will give the value of x to be equal to 8 or x to be equal to a quarter. To solve the next logarithmic equation, we will ask the same question. Is the base of all logarithmic terms the same? If no, we will convert it to the same basis before we apply our power, or product, or quotient laws. We can clearly tell that all three logarithmic terms in this equation have a common base of 2. Which means we can now apply the power law of logarithms where the product of r can be shifted to the exponent of x. Thus, our product of 2 in the first logarithmic term can be shifted to the exponent of 1 minus away x. As all logarithmic terms on the left is separated with a minus sign, we will now apply the quotient law of logarithms where log x to the base of a minus away log y to the base of a is equal to log x divided by y to the base of a. That is merging two logarithms of the same base separated by a minus sign into a single logarithm consisting of fraction x divided by y. That means we will now merge the three logarithmic terms of the same base of 2 into a single logarithm consisting of fraction of 1 minus away x squared in the numerator 
divided by the product x and 2x in the denominator on the left side of this equation. Next, we will now convert this logarithmic form to exponential form when we change x equal to log y to the base of a into y equal to a to the power of x. Once again, we should start off with the base as both the logarithmic form and exponential form has the same base. From the formula, we can tell that both the logarithmic form and exponential form has a base of a. And we will now write the logarithmic base of 2 to be the base of 2 in our exponential form. Next, the exponent x in the exponential form will come from the opposite side of the logarithmic equation. And in our case, we will have the exponent to be 3 from the opposite side of the logarithmic equation. We will now complete the equation by writing the fraction of the square of 1 minus away x divided by 2x squared on the left side. Then, we do an algebraic expansion and factorization to give us the product of 5x minus 1 and 3x plus 1 to be equal to 0. Solving for x will give the answers of 1 over 5 or negative 1 thirds. For any logarithmic equation x equal to log y to the base of a to be defined, the base of a must be greater than 0 and not equal to 1. Also, y must be positive. Alternatively, you may use your calculator to check the conditions for logarithms if you cannot recall it in exams. As y must be positive, we will have to reject x to be equal to negative 1 third. That is because if we replace x to be negative 1 third into the second logarithmic term of the original equation, it will give us log negative 1 third to the base of 2 and this is not defined. Thus, leaving us with only one answer and that is 1 over 5. For the final part of this question, because of the word hence, we are required to use the results from the previous part to solve this equation. And to do that, we have to find something to swap out the x in the previous equation. If we take a closer look at the second logarithmic term, we will think that x in the previous equation is now replaced by y plus 1 in this equation. We will now swap out all the x in the previous equation to y plus 1. Then, we do a simple check of the first logarithmic term where 1 minus away the sum of y plus 1 is indeed equal to negative y. And 2 times the sum of y plus 1 in the third logarithmic term is also equivalent to 2y plus 2. This means that we are right, x equal to y plus 1. So, we will now use the previous answer where x equal to 1 over 5 to be now equal to y plus 1. And that's the answer for y, negative 4 over 5. Do you manage to get it right? Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something from this video and see you in the next episode of Practical Math.